Hey guys, so as promised, here's the full recap of the Stellantis EV Day, which took place last Thursday, July 8th, 2021. This event gave us a much deeper look at what exactly Stellantis has planned going forward within the next decade. We will move through the video with five main topics, an overview, the brands, the technology, the ecosystems, and the financials. So let's begin. First off, just in case you still aren't familiar with the name Stellantis, this is the name of the multinational automotive corporation that was formed in early 2021, the result of the merger between Italian-American Fiat Chrysler Automobiles and the French PSA Group. Within Stellantis, there are now 14 different brands, with all of them remaining post-merger. So first, to look at a quick overview, Stellantis is going all in on the electric vehicle movement. First, they are investing more than 30 billion euros, or 35.6 billion American dollars, on the development of future products through 2025, with a majority of that money for the company's electrification and software strategy. Other funds would go to investments that the company has made with various joint ventures, and those range from in-car technology, to electric drive units, and even battery technology. Stellantis also has some staggering goals, as outlined by their CEO, Carlos Tavares. By 2025, across their 14 brands, 98% of models in Europe and the US will offer an electrified version, and by 2030, 70% plus of European sales and 40% plus of US sales will be low emissions vehicles. And that's a far cry from 2021, where just 14% of European sales and 4% of US sales are currently low emission vehicles. Thierry Koskas, the chief sales and marketing officer, explained that there were three main reasons why Stellantis would be able to achieve these goals, and you can see those on screen. So now let's move on to the brands. As we've covered, Stellantis has an incredible portfolio of 14 brands, but they only really looked at six of them more in depth during this EV presentation. They started with Opel from Germany, where CEO Michael Lawschiller talked about how Opel's EVs mean emotions for their customers, delivering pure emotions through electrification. Opel wants to go purely electric in Europe by 2028, while also trying to get into the Chinese market. Their CEO also boasted that this is the first brand to use an electric rally car, the Corsa E, and that he does intend to bring back the Manta nameplate with a new model called the Manta E, coming by the mid-decade. So the original Opel Manta was a rear-wheel drive sports coupe that was built from 1970 to 1988 with two generations. Dodge was next, and CEO Tim Kaniskis began by describing how the most powerful brand in the industry won't be selling electric cars, but rather American e-muscle. Dodge wants to continuously improve the Hemi output and power plant with more and more horsepower because every gain in horsepower resulted in a gain in their market share. Kaniskis claimed that the Dodge engineers have reached a practical limit of the performance they can achieve from internal combustion engines, knowing that electric motors can give them more. Kaniskis said this isn't a bad thing, and he views EVs as more of a natural evolution of the muscle car, the evolution that can provide more horsepower, more performance, and a better driving experience. By 2024, they will be launching the world's first full battery electric muscle car, so that's around the same time that the launch of the next generation Charger and Challenger are also expected to release. Whether the battery electric stuff completely replaces the internal combustion engines, we don't know yet. It's probably going to be a few models at first to showcase their stuff and try to change the public perception. Kaniskis then went on to show a bit of a teaser or commercial of a concept vehicle with a lit up version of the Frat Dog emblem, which was used by the Dodge division from 1962 through 1976. It's simply three arrowhead shapes that form a three-pointed star, but the Fratzog name is actually meaningless, it's just something that stuck around after one of the designers came up with it. So that logo will probably be featured on the next gen of the Charger and Challenger vehicles. And back to the teaser, it looked like a Charger or Challenger with a sculpted hood, square mirrors, and LED front lighting. At the end of it, the vehicle also did what looks like a four-wheel burnout, instead of just two like the current rear-wheel drive V8s. Peugeot was next, and they seem to already have a foot in the electric door, as 70% of all the models in Europe are currently available with an electric version. EVs are at the heart of Peugeot's strategy, and 45% of their light emissions vehicle sales are higher trim levels, meaning that wealthier customers don't mind buying these electric premium vehicles. And they will have 85% of their models electrified by 2023, and 100% by 2025. The next featured brand was Ram, and as Mike Koval, the Ram brand CEO claimed from Auburn Hills, Michigan, they are built to serve, with a promise to serve the next-gen of Ram customers with next-gen products. 
He says that truck customers are open to electrification, but they're not willing to sacrifice power, performance, or capability. So Ram wants to offer a full portfolio of Ram e-technology. They will begin production on a Ram 1500 full-size battery electric vehicle in 2024 and offer a fully electric portfolio by 2030. Things shifted back to Europe with Fiat, and they want to have electric versions on every vehicle nameplate by 2024. Their justification is that electric cars bring more simplicity, they're more fun to drive, and they're more caring for the planet. Simply put, electricity enhances Fiat's DNA. The first EV dedicated model is the 500 electric, and they also showcased a very cool Centavon concept vehicle. The final brand went back to North America with CEO Christian Meunier talking about Jeep. Their mission, zero emission freedom. Jeep showed an amazing commercial of what the Jeep Life Electrified looks like, with amazing features such as biometric recognition, drone pairing, and autonomous off-roading. Of course, those are just ideas at this point, but still very cool to see. I highly recommend watching that whole video. It's awesome. We also got confirmation of the Grand Cherokee 4xE, and by 2025, there will be zero emissions 4xE vehicles in every SUV segment, with 70% of all Jeep vehicles sold being electrified, including some zero emission offerings for the Grand Wagoneer. Already in 2021, 100% of the SUV lineup in Europe offers 4xE technology, so for every model, and the Compass and Renegade 4xE are the best-selling LEVs in Italy, Jeep's largest market in Europe. The Wrangler 4xE is also the best-selling plug-in electric hybrid vehicle in North America, just two months after its launch. Now we can move on to the technology that Stellantis plans to offer. They have four dedicated new platforms that you can see on screen. The Stella Small is for subcompact size unibody vehicles, aka efficient city or mobile cars. The Stella Medium is for compact to medium sized unibody vehicles, cars that are more premium. The Stella Large is for large size unibody vehicles, so that would be all wheel drive performance and American muscle. And finally, the Stella Frame is tailored for medium to large sized body on frame vehicles, like pickup and full size SUVs. There are different battery sizes for each of these platforms, with various kilowatt hours. So the battery range varies from 300 miles on the small to 500 on the large and frame. The Stella Large in particular is interesting as the batteries are very low and the electric motors are on the edges. So that will allow for a variety of wheelbases, suspension heights, and width of the vehicles, from muscle cars to trucks. Eight vehicles are now being created to come to the market within three to five years on the Stella Large platform. When it comes to power, the four new platforms will incorporate three new electric drive modules, or EDMs, that combine the motor, transmission, and inverter. The EDMs are compact, but they are flexible enough to offer each platform front, rear, and all-wheel drive, as well as a plug-in or 4xE configuration. There's also one scalable inverter that allows Stellantis to go from cost-effective to high-performance vehicles. They claim this is a future-proof strategy, as the platforms have interchangeable battery cells, electric motors, power inverters, and software. Stellantis will be able to upgrade and enhance the software and hardware, naturally evolving over time. Also mentioned was a new solution for trucks on top of the battery electric vehicle. Stellantis said it was confidential at the moment, but it would be a range electric paradigm breaker. It was created to remove range anxiety for things like towing and give range at the level of a traditional powertrain with no compromise on payload and cargo volume. So within five or so years, truck customers should have these two EV choices, battery electric or the new confidential one. If you're wondering, the EDMs will be manufactured locally to their assembly plants. So for example, the European built vehicles will have EDMs that are manufactured by NPE, which is a joint venture between Stellantis and Nidec. As you can see on screen, all of this technology can lead to some insane performance, like acceleration from 0 to 62 miles per hour in as low as 2 seconds. Next up are the ecosystems. Basically, how will this work for the customers? In terms of charging, each customer will have wall boxes, a portable charger, and public charging stations. There are already 35 trail charging stations that we saw in the Jeep video, thanks to a partnership between Jeep and Electrify America. And by 2025, Stellantis wants 1,500 locations and 5,000 fast chargers. And by 2030, they want 9,000 locations and 35,000 fast chargers. All of this in Europe. They do intend to launch this in America as well, but the timeline is always many years after Europe. It looks like these charging stations will slowly replace the gas stations, but it still seems very vague as to how exactly they will do this. 
As for the battery reuse and repair, Stellantis wants to have the battery health of the customer's vehicles above 70% at all times. They will have 21 battery repair centers by the end of 2021. They also currently have a battery remanufacturing center to fully repair the batteries with the only location so far in Russellheim called the Battery Expertise Center. So when battery life is no longer suitable for vehicle use, it can be reused in a second life for other charging or storage solutions. So the battery will get recycled where 90 to 99% of the raw materials will be extracted during this recycling process and then reused again. And Stellantis hopes to duplicate this factory across the world. Now the final thing to talk about are the financials and the numbers. Again, Stellantis plans to invest more than 30 billion euros or 35.6 billion US dollars through 2025 in electrification and software with hopes to continue being one of the most efficient investors, 30% better than the industry average. By 2025 across 14 brands, 98% of the models in Europe and the US will have an electrified version with all the nameplates offering a battery electric option by 2029 in the US and by 2030 in Europe. There will also be 55 low emission passenger vehicles across the US and Europe by 2025. This can all be made possible by reducing battery costs by 40% by 2024, and then a further 20% from 2024 to 2030 through things like economies of scale and better partnerships. And this will increase the profit margins and allow EVs to become as affordable as internal combustion engines to their customers. So that's the end of this video for today, guys. Hopefully you enjoyed going over everything with me. Let me know your thoughts on everything we covered. I want to hear if you're excited or very disappointed in what's coming next. As always, thanks for watching. Make sure to like and subscribe for all your Mopar content. And I'll see you guys in the next video.